We spoke a second ago about the opportunities that are presented to you. You know, major network is going to be there, Fox, ESPN. Uh... Hi, and welcome to Kelly, where we talk about life, your life and my life. And through Kelly, we hope to inspire. I have Tenard Terrell Davis on the show today. That's tough. That's my full That's... government name. <laughs> <laughs> like it. Um, you were uh, in the NFL, mm -hmm. and you played on many teams. Mm -hmm. Name some of the teams you were with. Uh, the teams I played for were the Colts, the Titans, the Eagles, and the Panthers. Wow. And I was able to achieve a Super Bowl ring with Indianapolis Colts my rookie year, so I was blessed yeah. to be able to achieve that. Wow. So, um, dedication that it takes to get um, to that point. And the reason I want to talk about this, because we were going to talk about your acting career, mm -hmm. and. I want people to know that anything that you go into and you reach the professional world with that, that there is a struggle, mm -hmm. there's dedication, there's mm -hmm. training that goes along with mm -hmm. that. Um, it doesn't come overnight. Of course not, of course not. You know, being a professional, well, when I was a professional athlete, as a child, uh, you're playing a sport because you're in love with it. Y your cousins or your friends are out there playing and it's all a competitive, you know, friendship. As you get older, you starting to see that that sport can give you a way out of a situation. You know, how I was living in the Miami, Florida, living in the hard uh, community. Yeah. Now, with that, as a child, you don't know that when you are put in that kind of situation, meaning that being a football player, that you have to take it to the next level when it comes to hard work and dedication. You all, all you're going off is athletic ability. Right. Now. One person told me best, if, if you, you have to believe in yourself more than anybody else believes in you. So the coach himself can tell you, hey, you're awesome, but do you believe you're awesome? No, you know, you always have to push yourself and make sure at any given point when your number is called to get on the field and make a play, you have to step up to the plate. And that's, that's the sep that separates the average player from the great player. And what's the pressure like when you get up there? Uh, it, it was never pressure to go out there and perform, you, you always just never want to let yourself down. That's how I felt. Okay, I like that. Um, because the, the fans are going to be out there, the cameras are going to be on, uh, and if you if you have any doubt about your athletic ability or, or your overall game, it'll eventually show up and the coaches will see it and you'll find yourself out in the NFL or whatever sport you're playing. Right. It's like that with acting too. Mm -hmm. um, the reason it's important to train or to be in, the, in an environment where you know, you can train in different ways. Mm -hmm. um, you don't necessarily have to be in a, in a school or a classroom, mm -hmm. but you have to be, you know, in a theater production, um, on set, doing independent work, whatever, to build your... Um, but the same thing is um, people, if you're, if you're not prepared and you're not ready, it shows. Exactly, and a lot of players, a lot of kids these days, when I played uh, high school and college ball, you had to be at the top big schools to get an opportunity to go to NFL, Florida, University of Miami, Florida State, Michigan. And nowadays that the, with the, the age of technology, teams can find you at the smallest school. Yeah. So, you know, your, your talents won't be overlooked. So same with acting. You know, you could probably be at the smallest community in the United States and be probably one of the best actors, but you keep pushing on, pushing on, pushing on. And eventually you get the audition somewhere in New York City that you got to drive all the way to and then when you're in front of that casting director or that big or whoever the people is that have the opportunity to give you an, uh, a chance, does the pressure weigh on you? Or when you see those lights, you're ready to show your talents. Right. So, love it. Football, acting, it's doctor, a, it's a state of mind. lawyer. It's a state of mind. Right. You know, exactly. It's a state of mind mindset. Right. I, I refer to my students a lot with um, that the focus that goes on. It's like it's like hitting the ball, mm -hmm. you know. And I refer back to sports a lot because mm -hmm. uh, because uh, people link to that and they can they can grasp it, but they don't understand that, that state of focus also exists here mm -hmm. in this world. Um, so um, you are now. Right now, um, I have a. Uh, I'm, I'm, I have a co-host. I'm co-hosting a radio sports to a sports talk radio. Uh, as a build-up uh, company, Hot Noise Radio. Uh, they reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to co-host with a friend. Her name is Michaela Thomas. You know, we, we both talk every day. She loves sports, I love sports. Also right now, I'm in the process of uh, trying to transition to a, a, a broadcaster. Okay. Uh, this, this week, I have to fly over to Ohio 
uh, to do a advanced broadcasting boot camp that's being hosted by the NFL in Bowling Green, Ohio. Nice. So it's kind of like a job interview as well. We spoke a second ago about the opportunities that are presented to you. You know, major networks are going to be there, Fox, ESPN, uh, uh, missing one NFL Network, just to name a few. And they just want to see what talents the NFL have when it comes to certain guys transitioning from football over to either sports talk radio, on the field analyst, or play by play uh, caller. There's so many jobs or titles that you can go into when it comes to uh, sports media. And one place leads to another place. Of course, of course. And your experience there leads to having the experience to be... In front of a camera. Yeah. You know, that's... Uh, I want to be an actor. Mm -hmm. and But I also like, love being in front of a camera, regardless mm -hmm. if it's acting or talking about sports. Right. You know, it shows your, it shows your personality and it also shows your level of skills of being able to per portray something, if yeah. you want to say that. Uh, well, I think I think every actor innately in them, uh, they they wouldn't be attracted to that unless they felt like they had a voice and um, a part in the world. And one of the things that I that I dislike about um, uh, things that people project on us is that uh, the the mindset of well, you're an actor, so stick to your day job. Um, we are actors, but we are a part of the world, and we can have opinions about our world. We're in a part of the world of entertainment. Yes. And that key word, entertainment. When you're a sports broadcaster, you're entertaining the people who are watching the game. If you're an actor or actress, you're entertaining the person portraying another person. Right. So it's you have you have people that don't understand the lifestyle of an actor or mm -hmm. an actor's life. Right. Uh, it doesn't have to necessarily be in front of a camera. You could be on Broadway. Right. You know, it's, it's, you're still acting. Right. Yes. And you're telling a story, story. That's for, for, some, for somebody or something. Exactly. Um, so I have for you some M&Ms. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very and much. You're welcome. Um, the reason that we do the candy is just every guest that we have on the show, we want to... Um, leave in there, leave with them mm -hmm. the thought that, that your gift mm -hmm. and your gift to those around you. Mm -hmm. And as you grow, um, you know, you become a mentor to also people mm -hmm. below you. Mm -hmm. And um, so keep giving. Yeah. I truly believe the more we put out in the universe, the more comes back to us. That's right. And it took me a long time to realize that I had to put out more to get it's even the littlest, l littlest bit, but eventually it'll start circling and it starts coming back and you have felt that in your life. I have, I have. Um, and I left out that I am, I was a substitute teacher. Okay. And I coached high school football. Okay. And I was a mentor for high school kids. And I always lead, led them with this conversation. Life will get in the way. Yes. It, it gets in the way regardless of where you at success wise. Uh -huh. Rich, poor, and different, however. And I always tell them, you can make any excuse in the world to not want to do something. Yes. If you become that type of person, it will easily stay, it will be in your blood to, to have that kind of characteristic. So when the pressure is brought on, you will, find a, you will find an excuse to not do that. And then you will look back on it and say, oh, it wasn't me. It was them. And technically, it was usually you. Yeah. So what do you say to people who, you know, they're going down their path and then they have these people that want to hold them back with guilt or family or um, how does a person push on through that? And I'm asking you that because you had to push through that to get to where you were um, in sports. When I grew up in the, 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 the toughest time in Miami, Florida, mm -hmm. the, the the end of the 80s going into the 90s were drugs, gangs, and everything that was plastered on the news were, were true. Mm -hmm. My mother was a crackhead, if you mm -hmm. want to call it. My father was a drug dealer. Okay. And I had every excuse to literally be in that, that lifestyle. But I used them as the motivation. Technically, I really used them for the inspiration in the other way. Right. I motivated myself. And some people get that confused. Yeah. You know, you look at other people for inspiration. You should always look at yourself for the motivation. Uh -huh. And when I was able to articulate the difference when I got when I got older, I was able to apply that to anything I've done. Right. And sports was the easiest way because I was gifted. Yeah. But uh, 
Uh, with that said, hey, buddy. <laughs> hey, buddy. We have we have his his son in here, so <laughs> he's got his headphones on. He's yeah. just jamming away. <laughs> but to get he's he's awesome too. And, and back to motivation. You know, now that I'm an, an adult, I'm a husband and I'm a father. You know, my motivation now is, is not myself anymore. Exactly. It's him. Yes. And I always have to lead by example. And when I tell kids or teenagers, you're you're your own brand. Yes. Whatever you put out there, that's what people will look at. That's and so if true. you if you have a tarnished brand, don't get mad at the person that you're trying to convince to buy your brand doesn't want to buy it. Oh, so. That's great information to, yeah. to leave to leave the audience with. Thank you so much. Thank you for being a mentor. Thank you for working with kids, especially young men. It's so important. Um, as the things that are going on in the world, um, and, and we see the effects, you know, shootings mm -hmm. in schools, um, I think more of our mentors need to get out there and, and work with our young young men and young people and young women. It's so important, so thank you. And thank you for having me on your, on your show so I could be able to bless these folks with that information. You're welcome. Thank you guys for being here on Kelly. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below, share this video, and we appreciate you. We hope this inspired and educated you.